What's up guys, in this video I want to talk about one of the worst mistakes I see students make when trying to simplify a rational expression. Now you might look at this problem and you say, I know exactly what that mistake is because maybe you've done that mistake. I know I've made the mistake and if you're kind of sitting there curious like what exactly are you talking about, let me introduce you to the dividing out everything no matter what mistake that students make with rational expressions. See the thing is the division property is very very important especially when we're trying to simplify rational expressions and the division property just kind of simply works like this. If I had a 5 divided by 5 that's equal to a 1, right? If I had an x plus five divided by an x plus five, that's also equal to one. So anything divided by itself, even if it's a number or an expression, that's always gonna equal one. However, if I had something like an x plus five divided by five, that does not equal an x, okay? So what happens is when you have a, an expression divided by this five, like both of these terms are being divided by five. So what this is actually equal to is an x divided by five and a five divided by five, which is a positive one. So it's really, really important to make sure you understand that you can't just like divide out terms, right, to get an x when terms are not separated by multiplication. So the way that we could go about this is if I had this as like a five x divided by five, notice how my terms up here are now separated by multiplication. And when terms are separated by multiplication, I can now divide them out and that's how I get an x. So when you look at this problem, the biggest mistake that students will make by far, is they get what we call dividing out happy, right? Whatever they see in the numerator and in the denominator, that's exactly the same. They just go ahead and say, I'm gonna go ahead and divide out x squared and x squared, out. Negative five and negative five x and negative five x, done. Positive six divided by negative six, that is equal to a negative one. And please, for the love of all mathematics, please do not do that, okay? If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video is one, don't do that. But then also, we can only apply this division identity when our terms are separated by multiplication. Then we can identify whatever is the same in the numerator and in the denominator, we can then go ahead and divide out. So when we look at this problem, the way it was originally written, we need to rewrite it as terms separated by multiplication, which is everybody's favorite process, which we call f f f factoring. That's right. So what we're going to need to do is factor this. And so when we go ahead and factor this, when we go ahead and factor this, we're going to get something like this. Now again, what I want you to recognize here is my sep my factors now are separated by multiplication. So whatever is the same in the numerator and the same in the denominator can now be divided out. And you can see, guys, nothing can be divided out. So therefore, this is an example of a rational expression that looks like it should be able to be simplified, right? There's so many things that are the same in the numerator and denominator, but guess what? nothing can be simplified, right? That's it, like that is the final answer. That is the factored form, or you can just leave it in your original form. Now, if you do wanna see like how this works, let's just go ahead and change this problem up. Just like, let me give you a little bonus example. And let's just go and see how this would work if we were able to factor it and we had terms in the numerator and denominator that were the same. So now I have a totally different problem, but now when I factor it, take a look at what happens. Now, what I want you to be able to see is now I have my terms separated by multiplication, right? Factoring, thank you very much. And now I have an x plus one in the numerator as well as an x plus one in the denominator. So now I can go and apply that division property and get a final answer of an x minus one all over an x minus six. I'm sorry, x minus five all over an x minus six. Now, this is a common mistake that students always make, but in the next video, I'll tell you something that students always forget when trying to find the domain of a rational function. I'll see you in the next video.